Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League which was so much better than what the Champions League did over the past two weeks so I'm very excited about that and I know yes it's a little bit late my Friday schedule doesn't really allow for it I also know that these videos are usually not that watched but if you're one of those watching let me know in the comments comments below because that would be really cool to hear back from people uh before we go into the games i will do conference league first then we go to the europa league you can look at the timestamps below uh if you want to skip ahead to anything but a few uh observations a both of the favorites are out yes arsenal got eliminated yesterday and that made it a much longer day which means that <laughs> after effects uh, allow, did not allow me to make this video sooner Arsenal got eliminated by Sporting on penalties and also Villarreal, who have not been that great in the league, also got eliminated. It was overall a pretty bad uh, week, if you want, for Spanish teams with only Sevilla surviving. All the other Spanish teams are out. Quite the flip side for the Italian teams because uh, all Italian teams, except for Lazio, are moving forward. So. Uh, with the three Champions League teams, we have also uh, two teams still left in the Europa League and one in the Conference League, uh, which makes six out of seven Italian teams are still alive, which I think is pretty remarkable overall. And even the draw, the way that the draws went, and I can already talk about the draw as well in this video, uh, it seems likely that they have a good chance of advancing themselves. Uh, but I should also mention the Belgian teams because all of them also advanced a little bit against the odds but that is kind of remarkable how the Belgian league is really picking up the points. Bravo and yeah I guess given with the jerseys back there I'm losing two more teams here so I have only 11. I better get a Belgian care package in a way to cover these videos now. Uh, probably, probably not gonna do, do that, but I, I, th I think it's rather interesting to uh, look at this. Uh, it's also interesting to look at the most exotic teams still left. I mean, in the Champions League, if I'm sitting here in Central Europe, Austria, probably the most exotic team left in the Champions League is potentially Benfica. But you know, if you're living in Spain, this might not be the case. Um, in the Europa League, I would argue the most uh, exotic team still left standing is Union saint gilloise from Belgium. And the most exotic team uh, in the um, uh, Conference League still left, I would say, is Lech Poznan from Poland. And we have not seen a Polish team uh, in a long time. I have to say, overall, the European feel is it's all, you know, the Premier League lets teams in in a way and having a very weak La Liga selection this time around also opens up the door for other leagues to swoop in a bit was also not it was a so and so day also for German teams who are also not that many left to be honest so yeah give and take give and take we'll start in the conference league I'm wearing Basel that jersey was definitely worth uh, the price but we're not starting in uh, with the Basel game. We start actually in Istanbul. We're already on Wednesday evening. We had a record-breaking 4-1 by Ghent over Istanbul Bajakshi here. Uh, what was record-breaking? We had a hat-trick scored with in, within less than four minutes by Orban. Um, guy you never have heard about, but he holds now the record that just has been established by Mozada in the group stage at Rangers. Now Orban in the 31st, 32nd, 34th, scoring a hat-trick, 4-0 at the half as only late goal by the Januzaj that pulls it back for Yavajakshi here in Ghent. That was a little bit of an upset. Moving on in this tie. Uh, Lech Poznan getting another easy win at your Gardens, uh, probably helped by the fact that your Gardens, I think the Swedish season is about to start, still hasn't started yet. So uh, those Nordic teams are never really that great uh, in these Europa League rounds. Sivaspor actually had the lead against Fiorentina and leveling the tie because they only escaped with a 1-0 deficit. Uh, however, as soon as Cabral equalizes just before the half assist by Nico Gonzalez, all the floodgates open and Fiorentina could send it home. Milen Milenkovic in the 62nd and an own goal and Castrovilli make it a 
big result and another Italian team through. Uh, Slovan thought also they are th uh, through and Slovan and Basel have had already uh, quite the tight ties in uh, the group stage. It ended 2-2 in Basel with Basel having twice the advantage. This time uh, around it was that actually uh, Slovan Bratislava held a 2-0 lead uh, after 17 minutes with Abu Bakari and Kutska scoring uh, two early goals and you thought they may, may see it through. However, uh, Calafiori in the 53rd pulls one back for Basel. And that's again a Basel team that's kind of so-and-so in the Swiss League. And then very late, Amdumi in the 93rd minute gets an equalizer. And it goes to penalties where uh, Basel starts, convert all the penalties. And Kuczka and uh, Basagian miss the first two penalties. And so Basel are through to the quarters. A big chance miss missed, honestly for Basel there. Now, um, speaking of duplicities, another duplicity of events was that uh, Z1-2-1 against Lazio. Again, and again, Lazio had the lead through Felipe Andersen. However, Carlsen quickly equalizes. And then I guess when uh, Lazio, I did not see from the game, but I can imagine when Lazio was pressing for uh, that equalizer, uh, Pavlidis and Carlsen, I can very well imagine that this was a counter attack to see it through expected goals though was really really bad for Lazio. for lazio this was only 1.13 to uh, 0.25 so uh it tells you about ev everything you need to know about that game a only italian team eliminated and at that another jersey that is recently got very well worth it getting this one for these videos nice jersey i need to get and that that's probably the one that I will, I'll, I'll, I'll go for three one over sheriff and then uh, the shocker of the evening that Anderlecht, who had a 1 1 draw, uh, exit uh, via Real with a 1 0 win, a late goal by Slimani in the 73rd minute. And while there were chances on both sides, it is Anderlecht who go through. And you know, on one side, it's, you know, when I look at, again, uh, the jersey, I'm a little bit sad to see Villarreal go because this was a competition that was tailor-made for them to win, more, more or less. But um, seeing a big-name team like Anderlecht, again, a team that is not that great in the league, move on that well, that is actually quite exciting to see. And then West Ham, um, it looks from the uh, n numbers, a very easy 4-0 win, but you know, there's a little bit of, uh, in there. Skamaka gave West Ham a 20th minute lead, then uh, a goal, an equalizer by Nikolic was not given for offside. When Gustavo got sent off just before the half with a red, red card, it was an easy Bowen uh, uh, adding two right after the half and then Mubama also on one. It is tie was then done 4-0 and West Ham is another one of those teams that you may have to consider uh, for this title now uh before the draw we had the following um pro pro properties for winning it all with west ham being the favorites but it's very very tight with fiorentina so those two were the overall favorites and nice a third at z uh a fourth kind of in the end and basel all the way on the bottom uh saying because i'm wearing basel with the belgian teams being ahead of Poznan. so i thought this was a rather rather interesting overall the draw already happened and it gave us a very, very interesting uh, matchups. First of all, <laughs> I know this is very self-serving, uh, all the teams that I have jerseys of got separated. Uh, but it's also interesting because um, I think this is of all the draws the most even one. We have Poznan against Fiorentina and Basel against Nice in the upper half and then Ghent against West Ham and Anderlecht against AZ. I personally like the Anderlecht AZ very much because you know Benelux duel you also see there's Ghent in there. There is, there is a potential for a Belgian semi-final. Although I would be surprised if it has anybody else but West Ham coming out of that bracket. On the upper one 
I think Fiorentina look at the moment the uh, favorites to get out there, but you know, don't overlook Nice. I think Nice is a quantity that is not very uh, well understood in here, let's put it that way. Uh, so we gotta, gotta, gotta see. Uh, nice are actually the big winners ahead of Fiorentina of the draw, and we see that also in the overall favorites post draw, where we see now Fiorentina moving up in first place. Uh, ahead of Nice and Westerman, then Z, um, and on the bottom they have then uh, just a few changes. On to the Europa League, which was really even more exciting, although the first matchup here was not all that exciting, uh, with United getting a win through a Rashford goal. In the first half they had a little bit of wobble, but in the end they cruise through to the next round. Fenerbahce Sevilla... Uh, was an odd game because you know in the first leg uh Fenerbahce were unluck really unlucky to lose 2-0 and, and they thought they will come out storming however it was Sevilla who had the better chances overall uh but then Fenerbahce get the a, a penalty but really cannot create any other many chances and it's only 1-0 and Sevilla in their favorite comp competition moving on then the result of the evening Feyenoord completely destroying Schachter with Jimenez and Kutsky, uh, Kutsky, uh in the first half running riot and you know really nice goals in there. Feyenoord looking absolutely everything you know so for this season uh, or the last few weeks with Feyenoord have been you know rather na narrow wins now 7-1 over Schachter pretty impressive stuff I gotta say uh, it was 17 and 67 uh, and then the one goal that um, by Kelsey that pulled it back 7-1 everyone applauded I don't know, it was kind of to safety honor, but it, you know, it was also, I guess it was because of all, all of Ukraine, but that was very well deserved by Feyenoord. Freiburg, Juve. Uh, Juve controlled that one most of the, of the time, uh, had an early goal. Uh, Freiburg were really not in the game and then they had a little bit ba uh, bad luck as well because um, the penalty for Gould's handling was probably not as egregious as the one for City against Leip Leipzig, but was also one, one of those where you ask yourself, why is this given? Vlahovic con con converts it and Chiesa in stoppage time makes it 2-0. But you were more or less with a man more than, because Gulde was sent off with a yellow red, with a man more, you were cruised through to the next round. Which we also expected from Arsenal. And when Arsenal took the lead through Schalke in the 19th, and they played actually well, and they played a big, uh, a good lineup. I mean, Ramsdale uh, was was playing for Matt Turner, who made uh, the error in uh, Lisbon. It all looked like Arsenal are gonna cruise into the next round, way waiting second. However, in the second half, something changed and yes uh we also have to say there were two in injuries which probably will be a little bit hard uh tommy Yasuk and saliba got injured uh which maybe put a little bit of wrench in arsenal's place but uh sporting actually attacked that one created chances and were a little bit pressing however the equalizer through Pedro Gonzalez is one of those goals. And what is it with Sporting these days? I mean, on the weekend, they score a Rabona goal. And now we have another contender for goal of the rear Pushkas award. Gonzalez sees that uh, Ramsdale is off his line and from midfield lobs it in the internet and uh, Ramsdale almost gets to it. And at that point, there was really the chance that this game could turn towards Sporting, uh, Arsenal need to actually calm it down. However, in uh, overtime, they really then came storming. Uh, Trossard hit the post, they had many chances. Adan had a few really great saves in there and it goes to penalties. Uh, the penalty shoot shootout, yeah, and I I was not hoping, I actually was hope, hoping there will be no overtime at all because it got really late. Um, it went all for Sporting, although I think it was good that the uh, penalty shooter took place at the end where there were also Sporting fans. Uh, but Sporting started, converted all the penalties, although Ramsdale, uh, well, the ones Ignacio and Artur Gomez, he was, uh, I think, there. Uh, it, it could have well be saved, although I think Adan has the better chance. But uh, Oedegaard, Saka and Trossard, all without doubt. But I thought the momentum is building towards Arsenal until Martinelli steps up and sees his penalty saved. And then Santos just has to convert and win it. And that's a great feeling to have 
and he did and Sporting pulled the upset. Arsenal, who were the favorites in this tournament, are also out, like Villarreal. Leverkusen, no trouble with um, Ferencvaros, an early goal through the AB. Yes, there were a few chances in there where maybe Ferencvaros could have equalized, but overall it was rather easy. It was also surprisingly easy for Roma, who did a perfect Italian job. And if the goal by Smalling, that was a little handball, uh, before I have would, would have counted, he would have said this was perfect Mourinho. Uh, Real Sociedad did not have the means to break Roma down, and Roma just played Mourinho style. Uh, nasty, hard to break down, all that that was needed. They get the nil-nil, another Spanish team out. And then Union saint gilles had actually no trouble with Union Berlin, who had a, a surprisingly flat performance. And it did not help that the first goal came in the 18th minute. Union Berlin could not really do anything for the game, and Union saint gilles did not do. And then uh, Lazare uh, Amani was a brilliantly played goal, and La Pousin in stoppage time make it 3-0 rather I'm fading in another Belgian team through and with these results we have the list of favorites ahead of the draw United have you I was surprised the sporting eye ahead of Roma but you know Champions League team uh, Leverkusen, Feyenoord, Sevilla and Union saint gilles uh, of course the clear outsiders in this lineup. Sevilla so low also only because they're doing really really bad in the league. Now ahead of the draw which was again an open draw the only thing I did not want to see and that's because of crowd trouble was another Roma Feyenoord matchup. Alas those two were then left in the pot. We get another fan of the Roma matchup. A replay of the Conference League final. This is how it will be spun. There will be trouble because Feyenoord fans, uh, this was a couple of years ago, this, um, did something in Rome. There were also a little bit some scuffles at the final. I'm a little bit afraid this will not be a great game. It will not be remembered for uh, the sporting side, unfortunately, and I really hate it to be honest. But we also got a rather uneven draw because remember that the three favorites were uh, United, Juve and Sporting. Well, Juve and Sporting play each other and in a potential semi-final they played against the winner of United against Sevilla. So we have the top three clashing in a way and Sevilla of course being the Europa League specialists, although this is a very, very weak Sevilla side this time around. Also, United, Barcelona, Betis, Sevilla. They always go to Spain. They will run out of Spanish teams. Uh, they probably have to go to, it seems like they have to either go to Portugal or Italy next. I would very much favor them to go on and then play between Juve and Sporting. I think, um, especially if it's Juve, United, that's a pretty big matchup and maybe... You know, Pogba is probably not playing, although he moved there. So uh, it's, it has a little bit of a Champions League flavor. Leverkusen will be very pleased to play Union Saint-Gilles. They have a very nice road to the final, although I think that the strongest team in this is probably Roma because of Mourinho. But you know, Feyenoord has the offensive power to hurt Roma. So while I think Leverkusen... Uh, on paper might be uh, the favorites to come out there. I think the finals will be between Feyenoord and Roma. And yeah, there's a potential for an Italian final, although I think it's United to lose, and that's exactly what we see for the favorites. United ahead of Leverkusen, and then Juve and Roma. Feyenoord, Sporting, Sevilla, and Union Saint-Gilles round it out. That was it from me. Let me know how, what you thought about the action and the draws uh, yesterday. I think this was highly entertaining stuff. Um, we had two huge upsets. And as, as, as I said, uh, it's a very interesting field at the moment. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!